This is KGW News at 11. And we begin tonight at 11 o'clock with the wind and fire situation around the Portland Metro, including a fire burning right now in Oregon City. It broke out earlier tonight on a day where conditions have made it easy for fires to spread quickly. We've also seen down trees and power lines causing power loss for thousands of people. In the Tri-County area, close to 100,000 people are without power tonight, according to outage numbers from PGE and Pacific Power. Let's go to Catherine Cook. She's live tonight in Oregon City by that fire. Catherine. Dan, this is now a three alarm fire near Clackamat Cove, and that third alarm was to bring in outside resources because crews here are spread so thin tonight. Let's get right to that video from earlier this evening. Clackamas County fire officials tell us this is a brush fire that spread to an abandoned building. Right now they're in defensive mode, meaning they're not trying to save that building. There are no injuries to report and fire officials tell us the fire has not spread to any other buildings at this time. Now, this is just one of several fires, albeit a giant fire in comparison to many others around the Portland metro area tonight. High wind, heavy smoke, and mounting damage. We saw it all over the Portland metro area Monday night. In northeast Portland, wind uprooted this huge tree, sending it into the Grant High School swimming pool. Chuck Curry lives nearby and heard the cracking sound. It reminds me of some of the other big windstorms that we've had in Portland, the, the big one in 1981 when I was a kid uh, living here. Uh, and of course, uh, this was before my time, but I know we always think back to the Columbus Day storm, anyone who lives in Portland. Portland Fire and Rescue responded to multiple calls, trees falling into houses and branches falling onto people. Fortunately, no serious injuries so far. In East Multnomah County, a tree limb fell onto a power line starting a fire on Highway 211. That's just outside of Sandy. Multiple roads there closed as firefighters responded. We have, with all the calls that have been going on, we have multiple apparatus responding to all sorts of situations from trees down to limbs and power lines down to small little fires created from those uh, power lines down. In the high risk fire zone near Mount Hood, PGE temporarily shut off power. They called it a last resort precaution to protect the community during extreme wildfire conditions and high winds. And in Hillsborough, firefighters responded to a wind-driven brush fire near Northeast 41st Avenue. It grew to about an acre before crews put it out. Back live in Oregon City tonight, you're looking at a bridge up there where not long ago, dozens of people were lined up watching the fire burn. But I got to tell you guys, there have been embers flying through the airs, ash, uh, tree branches snapping. In fact, some came close to hitting the folks up there on the bridge and they looked at each other and said, you know what, that's it. We're getting out of here. This is not worth it. It's a dangerous situ situation out here even now. Back to you. Absolutely. Yeah, the wind's still blowing as we can tell from your live shot. And as long as that's happening, the, the fires can't spread. Catherine, thank you so much. Now, the damage from this storm is widespread right now. The Mount Multnomah County Sheriff says a dozen people were stranded in their vehicles on East Larch Mountain Road because of downed trees. They're out safely now, thankfully. And let's take a look at some photos that you've been sending in. Heather posted this photo of a tree on her neighbor's truck. This is in Vancouver. James shot this photo of a tree split blocking a road in West Lynn. Christy sent one in, says that this is what the wind took out, what she thought was the strong section of her fence. And Guinevere sent us this video of a gust blowing a dumpster across Hawthorne Boulevard in Southeast Portland a little earlier this evening. Thank you so much for sharing photos also of the smoke. Uh, of course, not great for air quality, hard to breathe for some people, but man, it does make for some remarkable sunsets. Shannon shot this one, a photo of a sunset in Astoria and another look at a sunset in Vancouver. Vincent shot this one while out walking the dogs today. Share your photos with us uh, right from the KGW app. Just click the near me tab in the bottom right hand corner of your phone. All right, now let's send things over to Chief Meteorologist Matt Safino. He's in the Weather Center for us tonight with where we stand right now when it comes to this wind and fire danger. Yeah, Dan, unfortunately, these winds are not going to be dying down overnight. In fact, it is the opposite. They will be increasing overnight in Portland right now. Uh, it's still blowing 33 miles an hour over the Portland airport. They had a guess there of 52 miles an hour earlier, but a couple other things. Look at how warm it is. It's 73 degrees out there. We'll likely set a record for the warmest overnight temperature uh, for this for Tuesday. 
and the humidity is incredibly low. Only 20% that dew point temperature really tells the story. If you've been wondering where the smoke has been coming from, let me show you. Watch this. You see that cloud? Look at those fires up in northeastern Washington. Absolutely take off. Now, this was earlier in the day before the sun went down. There goes sunset right there. We'll loop through this again, and you'll be able to see how just how uh, amazing those fires were as they took off. And that's where our smoke is coming from here in the Portland area. Far, I'm going to go back to that loop again, that satellite loop for you here, so you can watch it one more time. Now, farther south in the Mid Valley, Marion County and South, their smoke. Watch the Lion's Head fire absolutely explode with smoke there. So a couple of different sources. Mid Valley, your smoke is coming from that Lion's Head fire and the Beach Creek fire over by Oval Creek. Our smoke in the Portland area, most of it's coming from well north into eastern Washington. When they got, when those fires up there got hit with the wind, they exploded and produced all that smoke. Peak wind gusts so far, here are some of them. The Glen Jackson Bridge had a gust of 60 in Beaverton. Big trees down, 59 mile an hour gusts. The Fremont Bridge gusting over 50 miles an hour. The West Hills, 43 and up on Mount Hood at Timberline. The Magic Mile, the wind gauge there, 64 miles an hour. What's coming up overnight? Look at this. Our winds throughout the night stay in the 40 to 45 mile an hour range. The gusts do. In fact, they get even up around 50 miles an hour in the early morning hours, as you can see there. And while they will diminish around midday, that's 40 miles an hour still at noon. So it's going to take some time for these to back on off. So here are the headlines for you. The strong east winds, not only do they continue, they will get stronger overnight tonight. Gusts of 40 miles an hour. The lowlands, but near the airport in the West Hills, 55 to 65 mile an hour gusts are possible. The winds will gradually ease tomorrow, but it stays smoky, which means the air quality is going to stay awful. So the best advice on that is if you have respiratory issues, stay inside. Don't exert yourself. All the usual things you want to do or not do. Also, uh, emergency managers are asking people not to call 911 unless you actually see fire. Everybody knows there's a lot of smoke out there. Dan, back to you. I will say the air quality was kind of striking. I could hardly believe it. Um, I've covered a lot of fires and just walking outside of the building, I could have sworn there was something burning on the other side of the street, yet alone as far away as you're showing in those models. Yeah, it's crazy. Got it. Thanks, Matt. Hey, tonight, two wildfires are forcing evacuations in Marion County. The Brighton Bush, Hot Springs and Devil's Creek communities are now under a level three go now evacuation order. The Beachy Creek and Lion's Head fires in the area have burned more than 19,000 acres combined. And that area is north and west of Detroit Lake will be under a, a level two get ready evacuation order. And that's going to be starting tomorrow at noon. A wildfire has decimated a small town in Washington. Officials estimated it has destroyed about 80% of homes in Malden. It's a town uh, just about 300 people population south of Spokane. Malden's post office and several other buildings also burned. Also in Washington, look at this dust storm. Our reporter Morgan Romero got caught up in this today. She says she was traveling across east central Washington when that dust storm forced her car and several others to pull over. She says she saw several accidents along that way as well. The dust storm closed several highways, including I-90. For the latest on these fire conditions, head to KGW.com or download the KGW News app. You can also get updates anytime on Facebook and Twitter. Today, supporters of President Trump and counter protesters clashed by the Capitol in Salem. Video shows some of the right wing protesters shooting paintballs at Black Lives Matter protesters and police moving in and making arrests. Before this, our car crews of the president's supporters gathered at Clackamas Community College and then headed towards Salem. I think it's great. I think it's good to see everybody out here united, standing for one thing. No flag burning, flag waving. The event's organizer says he put this thing together in just about five days. Here in Portland, protests for racial justice continued today. People gathered at Cathedral Park earlier this afternoon. Speakers included Letha Winston, whose son, Patrick Kimmons, was killed by Portland police in 2018. A grand jury cleared the officers involved in that incident. After listening to speakers, demonstrators marched through parts of North Portland. Now we got a lot of emails about this next story. A video posted to YouTube claims the city of Portland has set up a camp to quote house the rioters. As Kristen Severance verifies, it's really a COVID camp set up as temporary housing back in April. But 
I've been wondering where this large crowd of agitators has been coming from. The video titled Portland Houses Rose City Antifa was uploaded by the YouTube account Never Alone with Christ. This is a war encampment. The man narrating says the blue tents are where the protesters have been living. This is where they house the rioters. This is where the rioters are housed. But county officials say this is false. The camp was set up in April by several nonprofits, including Street Roots and Join, to provide homeless people a place to sleep during the pandemic. Dennis Theralt is the communications coordinator for the Portland Multnomah County Joint Office of Homeless Services. So is the city of Portland or the county housing you know, rioters, or is this a, an encampment for Antifa? No, this is not an Antifa camp. This is a COVID-19 camp. This is These are sites that we set up in April. We opened them in April, sort of planning them in March, if not earlier, to give people who didn't have a safe place to be during a stay-at-home order, someplace where they could sleep, have social distancing, take a, take a, you know, go to the restroom, wash their hands, get food, all the things that people do if they have a place to live that they can't do when they don't. So these camps were started for that reason and they're still operating because we are still in the pandemic. And they all look over there. Like many viral videos, this one took on a life of its own. After it was posted, we received emails, including this one from Sally L. Where is your story about Wheeler and City Council housing Antifa rioters at the secret tent city? Or this one from Bruce S. So who is financing Camp Antifa? Or this one from Peter N. I dare you to actually investigate and report this location. The campsites are in two empty lots in southeast Portland, just east of the Hawthorne Bridge. They house 145 homeless people. This is a, a camp right out in the open, covered in the news. Uh, we, you know, spend a lot of time putting it out there, very visible and has been open since well before the protests over George Floyd's murder. So again, we can verify claims that these blue tents are a secret Antifa camp paid for by the city of Portland are false. Do you have something you want us to verify? Let us know. Email us at verify at kgw.com. In the coronavirus pandemic, Oregon reported 154 new cases today and one more death. Here's a look at the daily totals. As you can see, the numbers have dropped a bit recently. Oregon has more than 28,000 total cases. Washington has more than 77,000 known cases.